What is going on guys and welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. Today I want to be teaching you a very quick fast setup to do like this uh, viscous oozing type kind of um, how do you call it like liquid you know but this is something that you can use for ice creams this is something that you can use for honey and you know a lot of different uses. So let's drop down a box and on the box we are gonna do a rotation of 45 degrees and let's rotate it 45 degrees here and 45 here let's see what we have so something you know something like this um, then what we're gonna do is add a transform and we want this transform to offset our box over here and then we're gonna add another transform and with this transform we will be um, pushing this upwards so we're gonna do dollar f and multiply it by 0 0.01 so i'll show you what this does what this does it's just gonna go up infinitely so if we hit this thing here it's gonna be real time you can see it's going really slow so we're gonna do 0 0.5 and that might be too much, but let's see. All right, so that seems like a reasonable pace for what we're gonna do. Additionally to that, we're gonna copy it and paste it on the rotational axis. So that you can see that that's very slow. What happens if we do dollar F? see if this is enough all right guys let's have a look at the flip book and I would say that I mean for what we're looking for we'll play with it a little bit but I think that maybe you know we are gonna make this a little closer so that like and we're definitely going to make it rotate faster you, you'll see that like when creating uh, interesting like um, viscous liquid type things a lot of a lot of the, th the tricks come with the way that we set up the initial source the initial source um, all right so let's see I think that this is good for starters and what we're gonna do is come into our particle fluids and we're gonna say emit particle fluid we're gonna select this and we're gonna hit come to our viewport and hit enter this will automatically set up our flip our you know our dot network and create these two nodes for us we're gonna get rid of the particle interior and we have our box which is our source and this is um, our dot import where we import our particles from the simulation and our simulation happens inside of here so the first thing that we want to do is that as you can see this thing creates a very large box that makes the simulation very slow so we're going to select the flip solver we're going to come into our volume and on the box we're going to say 10 by 10 by 10 which is extremely tiny 10 by 10 by 10. all right so let's push this up a little bit and i think that that's a decent sort of size to work with um then what we're gonna do is create a merge actually a ground plane connect the ground plane right here make sure that it is on the left side and we're just gonna slightly push it down all right so that works for me on our flip object you'll see that all right so if we hit play right now you will see that our particles are definitely not behaving like what we want them to behave. So what we're gonna tweak is 
on the flip object we are going to come into viscosity and we're going to enable it and then on our flip object we're going to come to physical and we're going to do density take this down to 100 and viscosity let's try to start with something around 500 so you can already see this is a decent start for what we're talking about but i believe that um you know we can create something a little bit more interesting and a little bit more interesting meaning that the way that we animate our source so let's come back for a sec here onto the way that our source is being created and let's just get rid of this and we are going to um make this thing spin way faster we are probably gonna want to have it closer to the center axis so something like that so that it's not like too far apart and then we're gonna also come here and add another transform and this transform we're gonna add a rotation here so you will notice that now we have quite a good amount of rotations happening come back here and let's hit play and I just want to see a few frames to see um, if this is really giving us a better result. All right, so as you can see right now, like we definitely need more viscosity. So I'm gonna tweak the viscosity, do a flip book, and I'll show you guys what the result is. All righty guys, so now I'm back and here's what we have with this basic um, simulation. As you can see, I played a little bit with the density ended up with a density of 88 and a viscosity of 5,000. Um, and this is overall what we get with this and uh, without tweaking anything else, which isn't even high res and it's looking pretty decent for um, our test that we're trying to achieve. Now what I'll do is I am going to cache this to disk and I'm gonna show you guys how we can go about meshing it. So we come in here into our fluid um, particles and we're gonna say test particles and I, I like to do explicit and just do this manually like the old school way and let's go ahead and say cache Cool. Now we got our particles simulation cached. Now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna do particle. I mean we can do particle fluid surface or we can do BDV from particles, and that's the method that I have chosen to show you guys first. Or actually not first, just for this tutorial. BDV from particles. We want the scale to be about 0.01. Let me refresh by hitting Control T on the viewport. And uh, what we want to do is reduce the particle scale to 0 0.8, 0 0.2. Let's see what we get. So maybe something higher. Uh, ideally, we want to have like definitely more particles in there. Um, BDV convert and we're gonna connect this to polygons and let's see what we get all right we can definitely see that we don't have enough particles to make them this small 
so we're gonna have to increase the point radius and possibly increase increase the voxel size a little bit as well now I'm gonna smooth it put a VDV smooth SDF and yeah we have something quite decent now what I want to do is I am gonna cache this at a little bit higher particle resolution and I'm also gonna cache it with the VDV and show you guys what this looks like but before I increase the particle resolution let me show show you how I go about doing that we come to the flip solver and we make particle resolution to point say 0.08 actually let's see what happens if we do 0 0.05 Immediately, you will see that now we have a lot more particles. Um, and let's see what this gives us. I will be back in a sec, guys, after caching it. Alrighty, guys. Uh, now that the particle simulation at a little bit higher res is done, let me show you what it's looking like. Uh, and this is what we have. So now that we have this uh, pretty interesting, you know, mesh, uh, I mean particle, let's just mesh it. And of course we did a little bit of meshing tests before, but we're going to have to tweak this a little bit now that we have more particles. So let's just make this 0 0.01 because we're going to need more voxels in there. Um, and let's see what that looks like. That is definitely going to look much nicer. Let's smooth it out. And uh, what I'm gonna do is reduce the particle scale. Let's see what we get. Definitely overkill. <laughs> All right, let me tweak this one more time. Let me come back to the VDB from particles. Well, what I want to do is I'm going to just reduce the amount of voxels and ignore 27 small or large particles, change minimum radius in voxels. So let's do like 1.5 and let's possibly increase this to 5. Let's just smooth it out a bit and I think I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking. So we are ready to cache it. If we hit Alt and just duplicate that, we can just duplicate this, put it here and do test mesh. I will mesh this and I will be right back. All right guys, I'm back and here's the result of the meshing from the simulation. So overall, I think that we're hitting a lot of the things that I wanted to show you guys. However, I don't like sort of like the stepping that we're getting in some areas. Um, and this is a few things. So one is the samples in which we simulated the particles. So because you can clearly see like there is a little bit of stepping happening. Um, and number two, it's, it's primarily cost because of the speed in which this thing is going up. Um, so we need to create particles in between and that's when simulations um, start to get a little bit heavier uh, so there are two ways around it one is we can increase the samples that's gonna take a long time to sim but that's a solution that you can use two you can um, slow down the emitter 
and keep the same amount of frames. It's gonna change the look of the sim, but it doesn't matter because we're testing things out, right? And three, you can add a delta mush to smooth it out or increase the smoothing of your VDV from particles. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the particles because I really don't mind changing the look a little bit. And actually it's not the particles, there's our emitter, emitter here. I, I wanna reduce the scale a little bit to like 0.8 and I am going to make it go up a little slower. So say for example, three. That seems more reasonable to me. And the last thing that I wanna do is get rid of these sharp edges that we have there. So we're gonna add a subdivide node and increase this but we need more subdivisions so that we can keep sort of like this this shape here okay um let's come back here and let's just cache a few frames so that we can see what we're playing with So see how like, of course we are, we have smoother edges, definitely changes the shape of what we're working with a lot. It goes up slower, therefore um, we're gonna get more of those creases and it doesn't go up so fast. So I can already see that we got rid of the stepping. So that's a really good way to problem solve those issues. I am gonna stop this. I'm going to stop the recording for a sec to cache this again and I'll come back to show you guys the result. Alrighty guys, I'm back and let's see what this higher resolution sim, I mean not higher but like fixed issue sim looks like. And we can see that it's already giving us like smoother edges and, uh, and it looks like, yeah, it is. It is definitely solving the stepping issues that we were getting. Great, so this is looking good. Let's go ahead and apply the meshing setup that we have. The, the same meshing setups should work totally fine, but let's double check. That's working, I can see a little bit of it still there. We can smooth it out a little bit here. And I think that that works for me. Let me do something here. I wanna see if I cache it, keeping all of that detail and then post um, post cache, I just like smooth it out with this delta mush. The benefits of doing this is that you know you can control how much detail you're gonna keep, and sometimes the delta mush does a really good, um, good job keeping a lot of the detail back in there. So let's do that. I am gonna cache this and I will be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. Let's have a look at what we have with this mesh. So probably in a production workflow, we'll have to go in and just like increase the samples on the simulation to make sure that we don't have any stepping at all. But this definitely looks way better than what we had on our previous sim. I'm happy to go forward with it. What I'm gonna do is um, just show you guys where you can increase the samples for all of you that don't know how you would go about doing that and I will move forward to um, texturing and lighting this um, but that is going to be on the next tutorial because this one's getting very very long so before I cut this tutorial what I'll show you guys is that you can come here 
and increase the sub steps of your simulation and that's going to get rid of that that um, steppiness that we were seeing all right guys i hope you like this tutorial and i'll be back with more